Hi everyone, welcome back to module 3 water accounting using VAPO. In this video, we are going to see how we can calculate water balance of a river basin from remotely sensed precipitation, evapotranspiration, and change in storage estimates. If you haven't watched the video on water balance, Please make sure to watch it before you attempt to do this exercise. For this demonstration, I use the Jupyter Python, but exercise can also be done using a GIS software such as QGIS. To do the exercise, you need to download the data files, which you can find on the course platform. If you go to module three water accounting tab, and then 3.2 water balance from remote sensing products and scroll down you will see this file water balance exercise so please download this file and unzip it into your working directory and start the Jupyter notebook and open the water balance exercise Jupyter notebook file which I have it opened here in the data there are two folders input and output folders the input folder where it contains all the input required to calculate the water balance and the output folder is to save some of the output results later on so we are going to calculate a yearly water balance for our river basin our river basin is a basin which is located in the eastern part of Ethiopia. Our river basin is an indoor hake basin or a closed basin, meaning there is no known outflow to external water bodies from this river basin. Instead, all the flows converge into a terminal lake at the northeastern end of the river basin. So for such kind of river basin, the water balance is simply calculated using the input, which is a precipitation, minus the output in the form of evapotranspiration, which should be equal to change in storage, or simply precipitation minus evapotranspiration minus change in storage is equal to zero for the exercise i downloaded the precipitation and evapotranspiration data from vapor database and calculated the yearly uh, precipitation and evapotranspiration for the year 2009 to 2015 and also download and calculate the change in storage from grace products for our river basin so first we need to import the required package which are shown here if you are not familiar with xra or pandas library which are very important for analysis of spatial temporal uh, data i recommend you to go and read and get familiar as with this package i have put some of the links here or you can google them and you read and understand the use of this package so first we need to import the required package and the next is to get the paths of the input files so the input files are these three NetCD files which contain the yearly spatial data for precipitation, evapotranspiration, and change in storage. I have put them in a folder, Powash exercise, and then the data folder. But for your case, the paths could be different. So please make sure that you have the right paths for the, the three inputs. So let's get run and get the paths to the files and open the files in xra 
So we have now three data sets called P for precipitation, ET for evapotranspiration, and this for changing the storage. In XRA, you can inspect, you can get some summary of the data. So for example, for precipitation, if I have p.info, if I run this command, I would get some summary of the data, which says this data has latitude and longitude coordinates of this much and time uh, of magnitude seven. So for seven is starting from 2009 to 2050. The variable is precipitation. The unit is millimeter per year. Source of the data is vapor and the time step is uh, year. That means a yearly time step. We can also plot and observe the spatial variation of these uh, variables. So for example, if we plot precipitation, P, precipitation and the zero is to indicate the first year plot. If we run this, Python would take a bit time because the file size is relatively big. You can see Python is busy here. If you see this black dot, that means the file is busy. So we need to wait a bit. Yeah, now we have the plot of the precipitation for the year 2009, latitude, longitude, and the magnitude of the precipitation. So as you can see, the northeastern part of the basin, which is actually the lowland part of the basin, receives less amount of rainfall, less than 400 millimeter per year, whereas the western and southeastern part of the river basin receive a relatively high amount of rainfall more than 1200 millimeter per year so we can do the same for the other parameters and see how those evapotranspiration and also changing storage uh, vary spatially next we can Load the yearly time series of these variables. So to do that, we need to first calculate the spatial mean of each variable and uh, save them into a data frame. So we can do that using pandas. So if we say calculate p dot mean and the dimension latitude and longitude, which calculate the spatial mean of precipitation for each year and also for evapotranspiration and change in storage and save them into a data frame so if you run this so it will take a bit of time because it can it should calculate the, the spatial mean for each variable for each year Once this is finished, we can view how the data frame looks like. Come on, Python, be a bit faster. Okay. Yeah, now it's finished let's run this part and see yeah so you can see this data frame has three columns first column precipitation second column actual evapotranspiration and the third column story change for each year so we can load a bar chart of this data using the plot function. I have this function to plot and give the path 
and some customization of the plot so if i run this i would get this plot which shows in the y direction the magnitude of each water balance inputs the precipitation actual about transparent storage for each year we can also compute the mean and max of each series using this function so we get like the minimum and the maximum for each input actually we can visually observe those values from this but imagine if the time series is very long then calculating the minimum and the maximum in this way is relatively easy now let's calculate the water balance so the water balance we said is equal to the precipitation minus the evapotranspiration minus change in the storage so if we calculate this we get the time series uh, values for the water balance and we save it as the for the column of the data frame so we have this let's calculate and let us look at again how this time series looks like and yeah you see now the water balance is added at the fourth column so we can also plot this data frame the way we plot uh, it earlier so let's plot it again and see yeah now the plot included the fourth column which is the water balance so does the magnitude of the water balance is the same as we expect no we expected to have the water balance zero because the basin we assume the basin is close to basin and there is no any known observed outflow but we have some values of the water balance so this could be because of two reasons the first one is because the remote sensed remotely sensed estimate of the inputs the precipitation evapotranspiration, transpiration the train storage involve some uncertainty so that also can make the water balance calculation uh, uncertain and the second reason could be that even if we say this is a closed debate and there is no known outflow to external water bodies there still could be outflow in the form of groundwater from the river basin which we don't have any observation so because of these two reasons the water balance could be different from zero this is how you calculate the water balance of a river basin from remotely sensed estimates of the inputs i hope you can manage to run this exercise by yourself and uh, observe the results if you have any problem in running the file or if you don't understand any of it please post your questions in the discussion forum and maybe one of your peers will answer your questions or i can also try to answer some of your questions this is all about calculating water balance using remotely sensitive products. I hope to see you in the next module.